Welcome to the Arizona Cardinals Madden 19 Rebuild Franchise, everybody. This is going to be the second to last episode of our journey here with the Arizona Cardinals. It's been a great run. We're now in the 2034 offseason. We've gone through nearly two decades in the series. And I'm going to be taking this episode to set this team up for the future. And next episode, we're going to sim through multiple seasons and see where the stories for these players end. This has been a really fun series. I've enjoyed the journey as we've seen players like J.W. Unger get drafted and develop into superstar players. Adding Ahmad Burns to the team was perhaps one of the most impactful decisions of the entire series as it helped us go on a five year Super Bowl winning streak. Many memorable players, memorable games, but it's time to wrap things up. So today, I'll set this team up, and next episode, we'll go through a handful of seasons. Not sure how many yet. I want to see many of our players retire, maybe go to the Hall of Fame. So we'll get there, but let's start re-signing some talent. Joey Spencer earned star development this offseason, and I really want him to stay on this team going forward. I will increase this offer, both the salary and the signing bonus, and hope that Joey will remain an Arizona Cardinal. And he will! And that will bring down our cap space a little bit, but I don't think it'll be too major. We are not able to get a one-year deal done for Marquise Morse, so he is going to be testing. I'm also going to let a lot of these players hit the market, but still might bring them back. It's possible for Rashawn Morton, Will Lejeune, and then... Let's see, I might use the franchise tag again this year on Roy Marpet. I'll have to put something here that he'll decline and see what it will leave us with, but I don't think uh, it'll be a ton of money. So one year, seven mil, he will test, and if I use the franchise tag, that'd be $10 million. Where'd the negotiating go? It disappeared. I've never seen that happen before. It's just gone. I was going to possibly give the franchise tag to Marpet, and I'm not sure that's even an option now. How can I release him? He's not under contract. Maybe I did give him the franchise tag. I'm not sure what happened, but he apparently has it now, and I'm out of things to do, so we're moving on. That's okay. I wanted him under contract. If I need to make some money, there is one move I might make. However, I cannot make it yet and I won't unless I need to. And that move, by the way, would be to release Howard Iwabima and try to bring him back on a cheaper contract. But I don't know that we'll get to that stage. So allow me to sign a scout, a trainer, and we should be good at head coach still. All right, free agency, our last round of free agency in the Cardinals franchise. And there are a couple big name tight ends on the market. Stackhouse in Sydney. Marpet is getting bid, so I guess he did not get the franchise tag. That must have been from his previous salary, so it looks like Marpet is gone. I'm not sure why that disappeared then, because I was going to give him the tag. But I guess we're left with $23 million in space, which is not a lot, but it's enough to make a move. Before I give this team to the simulation, I am going to try and set them up for the future. If they need it, I'm going to look at drafting another quarterback this season in the second or third round. So I'm putting Justin Olivia on the trade block because his development is pretty much not going anywhere on the bench on this team. So I would also like to get a running back behind Duran Samuda. Jason Lemon has now retired. Wide receiver is solid. We're going to keep things the way they are now. Maybe a new tight end. I'll have to strengthen the offensive line a little bit. We could use a guard and a tackle as we definitely don't want a bad situation there in the simulating. AJ White, Curry Jasper, they're good but need depth behind them. D-tackle is loaded right now, but old for the most part, so a backup defensive tackle would be a good idea. I do need a starting caliber off-ball linebacker, and I think there are good options in this class. Might want to get a young corner. Like I said, could bring back Will Lejeune. Could look at safety. 
Roster not looking as stacked as they once were, I'll have to say that. Will Lejeune is a solid player, and it doesn't take a huge bid to top what the Bengals are offering, so I'm going to drop this a little bit and be comfortable with this three-year deal. I'll offer a short-term contract here to defensive tackle OJ Andrews. This is not going to be a huge deal, but just adding some good depth that still has time and room to develop. All right, advancing to the next stage, probably have a few new players on the team, I'd have to say. And first off, looks like Howard Iwabima is back. We have a trainer, a new scout. No new players? There were some decent offers out there. We haven't gotten anybody. Nor have we been rejected by anybody. So Sydney gets about 50 mil to go to the Bears. Stackhouse, a little bit less. And Brian Patrick, a really big deal here for the 89 overall safety. One of the better players on the open market. Roy Marpet will get 27 to go to Tampa. Morse is headed to Denver, and that's a pretty reasonable deal. I just wanted to get younger there. Looks like we've been outbid by Cincinnati, so I am not going to lose to them. Not without upgrading this bid first. Like, I thought Andrews would have signed by now. Walters, I might increase this. He's just good pass rush depth, and I don't want to have to worry about getting, like, two in the draft. I don't always want to double up on positions like that. So we'll go to 56 points. George Wingo is available, and he has no bids right now. If I can get him at a value to be the backup to Duran Samuda and to get some carries, like, I am totally down with that idea. Leave us a little cap space. And that, yeah, I thought it would be 45 points or so. Probably not going to work, but sometimes they do. Oh, wow, our second round pick is the second pick of the round not bad and we're not picking at 32 this year it's 26 so do i want to trade up this year i don't know oh my a power back who ran 444 i've got to know everything about his ratings when he is drafted so halfback zach looker will lejeune has signed so did wingo walters and andrews so how about that? A steal in free agency, getting George Wingo, the 25-year-old, to back up Duran Samuda. And what was this, a two-year contract? That'll help out our running game and add some nice depth in case of injury. He's coming off the best year of his career, that's for sure. And it was a two-year contract, a very reasonable one, very low one. So let's take a look at some of these combine grades then. At linebacker, there were some good pass coverage and field general types that I liked. Jamal Ward, he would be an excellent addition. I do think that with this skill set, he could be a day one starter. George Duncan, not quite as talented there with the combine, but I still think he'd be a solid pick. There's also Jerron Parker, he had the better combine but it was mostly because of bench. I look for speed here, and it looks like there's only one player that can really give me that skill set I want, and that's Jamal Ward. There were some really good offensive linemen in this class. I remember scouting George Cleveland, who had an excellent bench. I think that he would be a tremendous value. Let's put him here toward the top of the board in that case. Frank Ernster, also a very good bench, good pass block, good pass block finesse, but he'll go off the board much earlier than Cleveland, despite pretty much even top threes. Marquise Oman has the best skill set here, though, it looks like. The bench is a little bit lower, not concerning. B-plus pass block, and the other two pass block ratings, like, he'd be an amazing addition. That is your franchise tackle for a decade right there. Found another value later on, Cedric Stevens. We get the B-minus power move, C-plus block shed, and maybe in the middle of the draft. Normally, I'm getting excited about the top of the board, and there are a couple values here and there later on, but this seems to be a really good class in the middle. I just hope that I'm actually in position to draft some of these players. Howard Womack, nice combine grade. Don't know the pass rush move for him. We have a trade offer. 
for Justin Olivia. Finally an offer, and it's a second round pick to a division rival. I don't care to help them out. We've gotten a second round pick from the Indianapolis Colts instead for Justin Olivia. So that'll give us an extra pick in what could be a very deep class. All right, we've already made it to the NFL Draft. So I will go through some more players on the board. I like that we have some mid-70s options here on the offensive line. So if I can't like fill all these spots, it's okay. I would like to come away with two starting offensive linemen, possibly. I think with Lopez here, I don't have to look at replacing him at all. He's a second-year player. For Henderson, he is a seventh-year player. The ratings are all right. And for Haynes, I'll probably look for a, a new tackle because there are so many good ones in this class. I won't force myself into drafting a guard. But other than that, offense is pretty easy considering quarterback is just a backup situation we can take care of. We have good receivers, could use a backup tight end. And then on defense, can I find an impact safety? Not sure this year. I want to get a linebacker. Just add some depth. We have some picks, and this is going to be the last ride here with the Cardinals. Last draft on Madden 19. So let's see how this draft opens. Gerard Green, the outside linebacker, goes to the Packers. Dante McDonald next off the board. And Giorgio Berry. Three straight defensive picks make it four with Haynes Bostick coming off the board. DJ Burton is next. Marquise Oman, the 80 overall tackle. Carrington Poole off the board. Zach Cash, the 81 overall tight end. And then Alexander Cody. Here are the quarterbacks, by the way. I'm pretty confident just waiting until like the third round or something. They do go early three. So with that final second round pick, I could definitely target whoever is available. Like quarterbacks don't go early in this series very often. That hasn't happened for many years. Right now, I think there are so many good offensive linemen available that I'm comfortable not trading up right now. Like, these second round picks look like they might be a little more valuable this year. And there goes Frank Ernster. So I'll be looking for a run here on offensive linemen. We're starting to see some offense, get some love. Really good uh, ratings so far for these top players too. A couple centers are now gone. So that's at least three offensive linemen no longer available. But you still have Bradley Rose, Travis Marks, and even a first round tackle in Casey Shatley. But I think that my target is going to be George Cleveland. And if I want a first round guard, well, there are plenty out there. I'm pretty confident I don't need to trade up this year. So let's move on. There goes Priester. Rouse is off the board, 81 overall. And then Lou. So already two more gone. And now a quarterback. San Francisco really wanted one. They take Warren Rector. And now another guard is off the board. So I might have to trade up here with Dallas. Travis Marks is 21, has high strength and a good top three, so I do think that it's worth trading up for him. There's also Antoine Woods, who's not as strong, but he is a good run blocker still. There are a couple players, though, I've been thinking about here at linebacker. I'd love to add one. Henry Anderson had a really good combine. I don't know his coverage, but I have to think it's going to be decent if his talent matches the projection. So, he might be... A player worth trading up for and then Bennett Mock 24 years old he's good too. pass coverage type but I think I would like uh, to maybe trade up for Anderson now linebacker is one of their needs so this is the time to make the move and I don't think it would cost a lot I don't think I'll get it for a six but it's worth a shot to see I can't believe how tough this is to move up five spots they won't take a four it doesn't look like they'd even take like a second round pick they might have more interest in the three but I wouldn't actually give up the three to move that far 
So I guess we're just going to move on from this selection and watch him go off the board right there. We'll advance now. Wow, 80 overall. Bennett Mock off the board. Okay, I and then Travis Marks is off the board. And then Antoine Woods is off the board. So pretty much everybody I liked. So it looks like we're getting what is essentially a classic Kane draft today where I talk about all the players I like and then we have a good time watching them go off the board. I'm going to select Casey Shatley with the intent to move him to right guard, which would make him a scheme fit. I think that he'll be a great fit in this spot and he's the selection, but they call it a reach. 76 overall Casey Shatley should still make for a good guard his run blocking is a lot better than his pass blocking right now so now we'll make our way to the second round David Wendling is off the board I was considering him and the champs take Bradley Peppers at corner now we're on the clock this is kind of a value selection here but I think it's a good spot to make the move we have three second round picks. I'm going to select a tight end actually. It's a tight end who has first round talent, Bryant Claybo. I'm just going to see if I could still trade down from here and maybe get him in a couple selections. None of these offers are comforting enough. Falling 10 spots is a little bit intriguing. Oh, that would be this pick. But I wouldn't actually be picking up much in terms of uh, value there. I don't think he'll have the speed, however it doesn't matter. The simulating really does not care about speed at tight end. Bryant Claybo is the pick, and he's at 78 in true talent, 6'5", 246 pounds, and 79 speed. So as Ali Kitchens moves into his 30s, we add a young tight end. Like I mentioned, this is about setting the team up for the future. So a lot of these players, as Looker is an 82 overall, are being drafted. So we can kind of see where things go in the simulating. And hopefully after this era ends, there are some players that can take over. But I know things are going to get strange with the CPU and moves they'll make and players they'll get rid of. So we'll see how it goes. I'm just trying to put them in a decent situation. I just haven't liked the trade down option, so I will be making some reaches here it looks like, but I'm just trying to get all the players that I really like here that I think will take us into the future in this series. And the next player I want to select is Lawrence McBurrows, a very talented defensive tackle who had a great combine, the best 40, a solid bench, and a great three cone. He's a finesse rusher and we have to get younger at defensive tackle, so we will right here. Mick Burrows. Ooh, that is a bit of a reach. And he'll need a little work there, but the skill set does show some promise. Unfortunately, the development is only normal. It's hard to say though what's going to happen in regards to JW Unger. So with our next pick, I do want to look at adding a quarterback. I do like this trade with Dallas. I don't necessarily have to get the best one. This is solid here. I'll take their three, pick up the four, because that fourth rounder is what I really wanted. But now we're not picking until later in the third. We'll just have to see as a quarterback goes off the board there. Hopefully there are still good options later on. And I expect there will be, but I've been wrong about that today. And there goes Gene Fife. I wanted the trade up for him. I was trying to with Philadelphia, and they were just turning down pretty much everything I was offering. I was even trying to offer players at positions in need, and they just didn't have any interest in making a deal for some reason. So, I'm not going to worry about it too much. It would have been nice to add a high-level quarterback. I thought I could trade back and still get somebody I liked, but it's not the biggest priority. Unger should still be okay for a number of years anyway. But I know who this next pick is going to be, and I believe it's going to be a starting middle linebacker. The pick is Jamal Ward. And this is another reach. I thought he'd be higher rated, actually. 84 speed, 79 zone coverage. I guess the awareness, strength, and play rec are really low, so that doesn't help. 
All right, I did not have as good of a read on this draft class as I thought. And now let's get to our next selection. Come on, New England! I should have taken Cleveland first. Oh, man. I hope the simming goes all right. I really should have taken Cleveland first. I just thought they'd both be there. I think Cleveland was a fourth round prospect, maybe late four or something like that. And of course he's off the board. That's how it's gone today. So this is a bad draft. I'm going to select Henry Eason in that case then. Uh, an offensive lineman who is pretty good. 75 overall, 53 in true talent. Not a bad addition to the team. I am going to add a quarterback to this team though in the draft. Montana State, A.J. Madrano. He has very good speed. He can throw on the run. He has good accuracy short. We're adding a quarterback after all. Welcome, A.J. Madrano, a 72 overall quarterback. Now, the accuracies here are not great, but he'll be the backup now for J.W. Unger, it looks like, or maybe third string. I'm also going to add Jerron Parker to the team. I don't think he'll be starting caliber, but he was a good value in this spot, and the value is pretty much matched up there. So, uh, well-rounded skill set, just not a high caliber linebacker is all. Well, we've made it to the seventh round after trading out of our last two picks, just getting some futures here for the simulating, but I'll make some seventh round picks to end the draft. We're going to select wide receiver Nate Blake, who ran a 4-4-4, has decent agility, but it's a reach with quick development. I've had some of these in the draft recently. And now the final draft pick of the series. There's only one way this can end. I'm going to take a safety, of course. Jatarian Law will be our last pick of the series. He had one of the better combine grades left on the board. He's 22, a hybrid safety, and Law is a 67 overall. And he'll probably uh, make it to the practice squad. That was not a good draft for me, though. Thankfully, the series is coming to an end, and uh, it's not going to be a big deal. But I would have liked to come away with uh, a better draft overall. George Cleveland, that was a big miss. The first round unfolded in a very bad way for me, too. Far from my best draft, I think my favorite pick here would have to be maybe my first one, Casey Shatley, being able to move him to guard. He'll probably have a chance to go up in overall. He is 76 right now. Did not do well in terms of development either, but now Shatley is... What do we got here? 76 right guard. Didn't change, but he's a scheme fit. It was a really strong class, though, at the top. I liked a lot of this talent. I talked myself out of wanting to trade up, and maybe that would have been the better move. At least a, a few spots anyway to catch one of these players who was falling. But I thought there were so many. This is the problem. When there's so many, I assume one's going to be there. And then there isn't. Henry Anderson. I wanted to trade up for him. I could not understand why Dallas would not trade. It's because they wanted the player I wanted. Anderson would have been starting caliber on day one. He would have needed some development, but he could have started for us. Zach Looker, by the way, 81 overall. Very good uh, skill set here with the 90 speed, the high break tackle. I've been trying to find a power back with that kind of speed for a long time and be in position to draft one, but uh, I wasn't too worried about it this year after being able to add, uh, I forgot his name, in free agency, but uh, definitely missing on Cleveland. That was the big miss here, and I think I, di I don't, didn't need the trade up. I really did not need the trade up in that bottom second round spot. I should have stayed there and just taken Gene Fife, had that back up for Unger in place. Although his ratings are not as good as I thought they would be. I thought he'd be a little bit better. I was confused why he wasn't the first quarterback off the board. Now I think we understand a little bit better. Here's Rasmussen who has a better skill set. He was not the first quarterback taken. The first one was actually in the first round. 
And then, I can't remember where he was projected, but Cleveland did go early. Star development. Okay. Yeah, I had two picks right next to each other, separated just by a couple selections. I should have taken him first because left tackle is more important than inside linebacker. And probably uh, Cleveland's skill set was better anyway. But here are where the highest rated players went in the draft. Plenty of good first round talent that we were not in position to take. Cleveland up here as well. All right. And that is going to bring us to the end of the draft and the end of our final offseason here in the series. Basically from here, I will set the roster one last time and then I am retiring as general manager of the Arizona Cardinals. And I'll be simulating seasons next year one by one. I'll simulate a year, we'll take a look at stats, retirements, and just the stories of that season for our team. And then we'll sim another one. I'm not sure how many we'll do, but I imagine it'll be, you know, five, maybe more. I want to see some players retire, of course. I want to see players play out their prime like Burns and Curry Jasper. So next episode will be the finale. And we'll see how it goes. Thank you all for watching today's episode. Wish I could have made the draft a little bit better to make this last offseason a bit more special. But next time, we will close out, see if the Cardinals can get any more Super Bowl rings, see where J.W. Unger ends up, and see where some of these greats go in their futures. Thank you all for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel with a brand new franchise beginning next week. And I'll see you again soon. Have a great day.